Well, I think as a family, we've always been really passionate about cars. I guess it started with our grandfather, you know, he was dealing in cars back in the 50s and 60s. And following that, you know, dad was, dad. was doing it from a young age and yeah. subsequently Matthew and Jared and, and now me as well. So it's definitely in the blood and it's, it's definitely something that, you know, we've, we've always been at, I suppose. Probably my earliest childhood memory um, was when I went in the go-kart uh, at about nine years old. Um, it's the first time driving around myself and absolutely loved it. From there on in I knew that, that I wanted to do something with motor racing or cars. Um, my parents then at 12 bought me a manual motorbike and uh, I got to grips with how a clutch worked, gears worked and from that point Dad then used to let me drive around our, our driveway um, in cars. Um, with a, Not that you were supposed with, to. With like a homemade booster seat, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, so I could understand how, how a clutch and gears worked in a car, so that was fine, so I'd drive around. Um, did you also go driving across the garden? Yeah, as I, well, I, I did do that, yeah. Um, so I got a bit sort of ambitious, as to say, and used to sort of borrow my parents' cars when they weren't around and drive them onto the grass off, off of the driveway. We had about an acre and a half at the time, and uh, yeah, I ended up doing a lot of damage to the lawn. So. These are our cars, and uh, as you can see, we all have very different tastes. Mine is the Mercedes C220 Blue Motion AMG Sport, and I love it because it's very practical. Stop laughing. Um, and it does everything that we need it to do as a family from day to day. But it is a diesel, and yes. this is petrol heads. And it is an estate. Okay, all right, keep going. Yeah. Right. Well, my car that I've brought along today is my beloved Clio V6, which is a phase two, so it's got a higher horsepower. There was a lot of uh, assistance from Porsche when they made this car, and uh, it's an oddball French car, only 18 in this color, and uh, it's something I really love. Well, I suppose you guys will probably kill me for this because of all the sort of nice cars that mum and dad used to drive, but essentially a car that always sticks in my mind from my childhood. Do you remember that Renault 25 That's V6 Renault 25. that dad used to have? That was a V6, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that car it wasn't an expensive car back in the day, but it was, it, to me, it was like a spaceship. Inside, it was like a 1980s kind of Starship Enterprise. And uh, yeah, it would talk to you. It, do you remember, it? it would talk to you whenever there was something wrong with it. And it most of the time. Yeah, I was going to say, it yeah. used to talk an awful lot. Renault, but yeah. it was going to be wrong. But the yeah. beauty was, Dad, you know, he bought it at a good price and then spent a long time just kind of getting it right. And, yeah. and he put yeah. some pinstripes on it. I yeah. remember that. And it, it went a lot faster. But we did some nice, uh, we, we drove to Switzerland in that car, so there's a lot of yeah, nice memories of attached to it borrowed that car one summer. Did you crash it? No, no. Oh. No, you broke the gearbox. I broke the gearbox oh, okay. and then had to replace <laughs> it before he found out. I'm interested in did the car tell you that you've broken the gearbox? No, it All just right. didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't supposed yeah. to be using it either. Love it. So, yeah. so what brake horsepower is in your car? About 250. Right, okay. So 434 brake horsepower is my beast. This is an Audi R8. It's got the S-Tronic gearbox, flappy paddle gearbox. So you call it a beast? Uh, yeah, it's a beast. Okay. Look at her. She's a female beauty drivers. beast. Yeah, hairdress no hairdressers. No no no, 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 no. The owner of a hairdressing salon would ah. drive that. <laughs> yeah, not, not a hairdresser. They would drive That's the TT. Funny. But very yeah. Funny. Okay, so um, in all honesty, yours wins what? The boring practical test. Mine wins everything. George, yours probably wins the most dangerous. I wouldn't, yeah, that's the, literally the only thing I would say it wins. I don't think it's particularly good at anything. There's but no driving aids on that whatsoever. No. So it's not very it's safe. It's mid-engine, a lot of power to the rear wheels. It's very small, short wheelbase. It's incredibly dangerous. But just to sort of, mine would be the overall winner, and I'll tell you why. Hypothetically, if we were on a Gumball rally, okay. It's the Gumball story again. It's the Gumball oh, story again. so boring. Right. right. It would win. Okay. Yeah. Because right. it's diesel. Yeah. More economical. Sure. So boring, that kid. No one wants to take a diesel car on a Gumball rally. How I got into the motor industry was, I think it was an organic thing for me. I was buying and selling cars throughout college. Uh, I always had to make sure that I had the coolest car in the car park at college. And so Renault 5 Turbos, XR2s, Ford XR2s, Golf GTIs, and each car I'd make sure was better and better and better. So I applied for a job as a sales executive for a, for a new car dealership locally. Um, and I, I, I got through. I, I, was, I didn't think I was gonna get through at the time. I was 18, I think yeah, I just turned 18. 18. I was the youngest salesperson in the UK for that franchise at the time, um, and I wasn't that great, to be fair, but I, 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 <laughs> I blagged my way through interview and I, I managed to learn the, the trade. So since then, um, after working for that main franchise, I've gone through a couple of other franchises and I worked my way up through, through the ranks, if you like, uh, through working for different new car, new car dealers. And my uh, recent job was actually a dealer principal for a, for a main new car franchise, again, a fairly big company. Um, but uh, about six months ago, I just bought my own garage. And that's what I'm doing now, running, uh, running my own car garage, which is great. 
So, uh, guys, this is how an engine should sound, by John, the way. Let's hear it. Unlike your diesel chug chug. John, John, listening, Ready? listening. I think that's quite cool. That yeah. sounds amazing, that doesn't it? Cool. I, like I get to again. deal. I get to deal with this every day. I was that man. I can't hear what you're saying. I'd love a piston to shoot out the engine <laughs> right now. <laughs> Okay, so I got into the motor industry a lot later uh, than Jerry, and um, I actually had my own pizza place from the age of 18, uh, pizza delivery business, and it was the most awesome place. Um, so all my friends worked for me, and it was like a like a like a cool car hatchback meet out in the car park the whole time. At the at the pizza, at the pizza parlor, yeah. Even you worked there for a while, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, pizzas got to their their places, their destinations very quickly. And a couple of my friends later on, uh, I had it for about 10 years. Um, one of my mates, John, uh, who's pretty wealthy, he used to turn up with a Noble M12 sometimes or an Aston Martin if that's what he was driving and just for laughs and giggles we'd uh, deliver pizzas in those kind of cars which is which was pretty smart actually. Um, so then I, I then sold the company and I didn't know what I wanted to do so I had Garden Leaf for about six months and I got a phone call from Jared saying look one of my mates is a sales manager at a main dealer um, is looking for somebody why didn't you love cars why don't you you know go and do that and now I'd always been trading cars through 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 the time when I had my company anyway um, so I had a, a big old knowledge and um, yeah, I started at the main dealer and uh, yeah, it's became a second home for me. So I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time in, in the motor industry. I've got to drive a load of different cars and yeah, it's, it's been really good. Yes, yes, it sounds pretty yeah, it good. Yeah, sounds good. Yours sounds pretty good as well though, George, I have to say. But... Thanks. Matt, yours doesn't sound No, good. it doesn't sound that good, but can you do this to your car? Look, my boot goes open from my button. Can you do that? I don't, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that either. Okay, that's all i got, basically. That's, yeah. that's all I've You've got. got economy, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Why have you got your roof down? It's raining outside. I know, it's really cold. <laughs> okay, so unsurprisingly, being the youngest of the three, I was the third to get into the motor trade. Um, it wasn't originally what I'd set out to do. I had a, a degree in architecture, so f uh, straight out of university. Um, basically, the next thing on my list to do was to just pass my driver's test. Um, and on the day I did that, I went over to see Matt at, uh, at his work, uh, to give him the good news, uh, where he then proceeded to sell me the, the dream of the motor trade. Um, and uh, yeah, he's a very, very good salesman, so it worked, and I soon became a, a car salesman um, and with just a, a two-week-old driver's license. So I was heading out on test drives in, you know, 30 grand cars uh, with... And they didn't know you had... No, no one knew. I mean, the, the question was asked, do you have a driver's license? Yes, I replied. I just didn't tell them I hadn't received it in the post yet. So <laughs> they didn't yeah, because HR were asking fine. for it. They kept asking for his driving license. license. He was like, uh, I'll bring it in tomorrow. I'll bring it in tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just so I need a bit more time. Eventually it turned up and then, yeah, they kind of like, wow, this is like a really new driving license. <laughs> Too late then. But they'd already employed him at that point. Usually it's kind of, you've got to have a license for a year before they're employed. But because he was my brother, they let it slide. So. I was an extra good salesman, so that, that helped. <laughs> So having my brothers in the industry uh, was, was great. We all shared this same passion uh, and we were all doing something with it. But what we did recognise was that all three of us knew deep down that we wanted to do a lot more. Mm. Right, here we go, Matt. You prepared to lose? Let's just go on that one there. Yeah, select the, 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 yeah, the, the most simple on track because Matt's driving. So. Okay. Do you have any idea what you're going to go for? Yeah, yeah something awesome. Fast, go for fast. something with an equal power to your car, Matt, like a Fiat 500 or something. Yeah. Uh, Why are you, Jared, the way you are? Yeah. Right, so give me any chance of winning. I think I'm going to go with the fastest car there. All right, good choice, Matt. Oh, yeah, no, that is pretty good. Zonda. It's not the fastest one, but yeah, I'm going to go with that. Right. Okay. So we knew we wanted to do something bigger and better with our vast knowledge in the motor trade. And um, having watched uh, the very final series of, of Top Gear you know, for the season um, over a Chinese, um, we were a bit disappointed that it come to an end. And we decided that we would try and do our own motoring show. And uh, that's where the idea originated from. Okay, so three brothers, brothers. rooting it up. Out. Film this. This is our storyboard. Okay, okay so right, basically what we've got is we've got to skip that one out. Sitting on a sofa, look, there's Matt, there's Jez and George. Okay, yes. jingle and logos, etc. Talk show at Full Star Classics, which is going to be known as the Talk Show Toy Show. Then we've got Jokey Banter, ha 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 ha, Matt's Sorry. Then we're going to have a uh, dealership test drive experience. Then we're going to go back to the sofa. Then it goes then back to, ha ha ha, Matt's not a Then we're talking about <laughs> independent review. Like Miss Daisy, George. Yeah. 
Independent review of a car of our choice, right? I, I literally have no idea where the name We were all writing down names. I do remember us writing down names. Yes. You know, and, um, I don't disagree with and that. And we wanted yeah. to have talk in, in, in the show. I, in, okay, in so I had a toolbox, and I remember the, the black toolbox had the word talk written across it in really cool writing. And I'm not saying I'm going to take credit for the name, but I said talk and maybe somebody else said show. Yeah. And it was like talk show. We thought, wow, that's brilliant. Ding. That sounds awesome. Ding. It was a light mold moment. Yeah, we'll do yeah. that. But it was in my back garden, just so we're clear. Yeah. Okay. Can we now be serious, if please? Be. We've got serious work to do, so let's get serious. serious. I'm not even joking anymore. You're um, not even joking. You, you, you want to bring it on like Donkey Kong, right? right? Listen, when you're wearing Matt, you can't take it seriously. Right, let's do some serious mess. Do I get to do a handbrake? All I want to do is a handbrake. It'll spark it close. Well, I just want to do a handbrake. That's it. Happens. Now Matt's going to do his driving. On go the gloves. So within a week after having this this get together and decide, you know, deciding that we wanted to do something like this, um, I I went to a local petrol station and I bought a uh, mobile phone holder attachment. Uh, a little flimsy thing, and it was like one of those suction ones you could stick on a car. And so I decided to film myself in the car, uh, and also stick it onto the outside of the car with my brand new iPhone at the time, risking its, like, its life. The purpose of it was to show these guys and say, hey look, we can stick cameras to the outside of cars, and we can film wheels turning, and you know, we can do this. And it was really just sort of a bit of a motivator and sort of a first stab at doing something. So after watching Jerry's uh little video on his Mercedes, diesel Mercedes, I think it's yeah, important yeah. to know. Um, yeah. I really liked it. I thought it was particularly artistic and I didn't like it really. It was it's Am I allowed to say shit? No. But it, okay, it was rubbish, okay, but it did, it did inspire us to basically do it a lot better. Loving the carbon fibre on yours, Georgie. Thank you. Joe, why, why don't you do some commentating, Jerry? Do something sensible with your life. What? <laughs> Uh, Why George's you? in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly have the fastest car by a long shot. So I far, I think you can actually use the, the boundary as uh, <laughs> oh, oh, the It's the steering. only chance I have is to steer using the wall. And George, that is sideways. taking drifting to a different level. <laughs> oh. Matt, that's not no, too bad, actually. I'll stay within the lines. This is like the tortoise and the hare, Matt. You, you're in the middle Yeah, but I'm going to get, tortoise. I'm going to, I'm going to win because I'm going to... George, 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 George can out drive you, 100%. Yeah, finally caught up with George. And now he's going to pull away because he's got a faster car. Yeah, but I've just spent half an hour trying to go the right direction. George, you nearly wiped out then. You nearly hit that barrier. The first episode of uh, Talk Show that we, uh, we did together, the three of us, uh, was set to be a review show of three cars, or specifically two of the most popular hatchbacks at the time, with a bit of a wild card, something that was less known. So uh, we did Ford Focus, the Audi A3, and then the Citroen DS3 was the... DS4. Sorry, apologies, DS4 was, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, was the wild card, yeah. Um, it was all to be shot locally. Uh, I, for whatever reason, uh, had the camera, so I was going to be the camera guy. Um, I wasn't originally supposed to be a presenter. So the way we shot it, it was, we, we knew we were never going to have a massive budget. As much as we wanted to be like Top Gear, we knew we couldn't be Top Gear, so we had to be a little bit different. We did it sort of almost as a bit of a behind the scenes, yeah. you know, with a yeah. couple of GoPros and iPhone footage and all this sort of stuff. So like I say, I was always in shot holding the camera. Yeah. And we thought that gave it a bit of yeah. a unique kind of flair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as for locations, we everything was local, as I say, you know, we tried car parks. Private, uh, sort of like pri private roads. Yeah. We, shot yeah. some, we shot some of the bits of four star classics as well. Yeah, we? yeah, yeah. Well, the, so we, my workplace as yeah, well. So we had a backdrop of cool cars and stuff like that in certain yeah. parts of it. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah. yeah, the equipment we used, I mean, we were on well, a zero budget. It was a zero budget. So we had a Canon DSLR, a uh, mic to share between the three of us. So we yeah. always had to sit really close yeah. to each other to talk. And so we we get eventually, we, we did. We had a night. We had an, uh, I had a GoPro, didn't I? Yeah. Which Bernie bought me. Yeah. And um, and we occasionally used an iPhone. So that was it. That was our, that was our equipment. And um, yeah. And then George got to work uh, having to edit after compromised like um, sound, which which happened fairly often when you're sharing a mic between three. Uh, but yeah, no, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, but so that, that episode was destined to be an episode, but yeah. actually ended up becoming the trailer. A bit of a showreel. Yeah, yeah a showreel, yeah. Two years ago, my brothers and I came up with the idea to make a show about cars that we would enjoy making as much as people could enjoy watching. We love cars, and we've owned literally hundreds of them and spurred on by all the incredible things that you guys had to say about us in our first couple of shows, 
We are Talk Show. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Booyah, good shot! <laughs> what a <laughs> So there are a lot of challenges um, we faced when, when starting the show. Uh, we're all working full time and it was trying to find a spare time, a spare weekend that we could all meet up uh, and, and get, this, get the show on the road. Um, compromised um, footage which we got from you know the camera running running out of film or the batteries running out on our one mic that was constant uh, it wasn't was it? it was constant it was relentless um, you know trying to film in a certain location that we'd managed to get into and then suddenly it'd rain or mm -hmm. we'd get kicked off of the, off of the location yeah. and then having to find somewhere else um, with the small window of just the weekend to do it so yeah we've we faced a lot of um, a lot of uh, problems haven't we really yeah, yeah um, definitely but yeah, I think based on what we've done with our zero budget and our compromised bits and pieces, we I, I feel a sense of achievement. Hmm. And so you should. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically for me, the, the most daunting thing was having the responsibility of putting all this footage together uh, that we'd shot over the, you know, the course of a weekend or whatever. Um, a lot of the time we didn't realise that the footage was a bit naff until it came f to me actually trying to string it together. You know, we'd had no sound on some things or there was everything was out of focus or there wasn't enough light and then it came to putting it together and it's like can't use that can't use that and so we did have to use a lot of footage that maybe wasn't up to a good standard but yeah. uh, again we put our own little twist on it and we, we tried to make it work as best we could yeah in a way it kind of helped define our style a little yeah. bit you know we put some black and white in there because we used iPhones to film on we knew sure. the quality of those iPhones wasn't good enough so George was like it looks better in black and white you can get away with it a little bit you can hide it yeah because so, we ended up having to use quite a lot of um, behind the scenes footage yeah. that we hadn't planned on using yeah, yeah. And, but uh, again that helped sort of define the, the yeah, sort yeah, of the gorilla style yeah. that we had and yeah absolutely <laughs> One of the things we keep going on about are these air bumps. These. Very different to any other car. You can squidge them in so if somebody opens their door, bang, it's not going to do any damage. Air bump. That's all I need to say. Okay, so the, the last couple of episodes of season one, um, we got involved with Only Motors, and the, uh, they, they got in touch with us after our Cactus episode. Cactus, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they said, we, we like what you're doing, and um, do you want to come in and have a chat with us and see if we can progress things from there? So while we were in talks with them, we were still continuing uh, our weekends activities of uh, doing more episodes. Um, and then it got to, we, we shot two uh, of the final of season one mm -hmm. with Only Motors. Uh, there was a four wheel drive, and we, we ended up becoming more of a challenge based series because. Yeah. Uh, only Motors decided to give us a format, um, and uh, it sort of it went really well. It flowed really well, and we and the great thing was we had people actually operating cameras for us. Yeah, we, um, all three of us became yeah, presenters, producing as us, to George. and George became you know a third presenter in the last two episodes, and we ended up doing the four wheel drive one with them, and also new DS3 launch. Um, which was quite good, and we had to be motor journalists for the day. But it was daunting, wasn't it? Like, you know, from, from filming it ourselves, from yeah. us, George, being the man behind the camera, and yeah. us talking to George, you know, now it was, we're in front of a crew, we're in front of, like, more professional people yeah. on, on, you know, sets where we've been given permission to be on, so it was all slightly <laughs> more professional, but at the same time, more pressure. You know, and oh, I think after like five zillion takes each, we yeah, managed we, to bust these couple of episodes out. Yeah, we did mess up our lines a lot. It was really <laughs> daunting to start off with. You know, yeah. we're used to having family members behind the camera, not not a team of people we, we didn't know. But so, I think it's yeah. definitely made the difference, hasn't it? Like, oh know. god, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a massive production uplift, wasn't there? So. Yes, the most famous motoring trio on telly is back. Well. Sort of. Right, you're gonna need to watch out, Mr. Cameraman. Yeah, definitely. This is talk show going crazy. <laughs> okay, get him out your window. Get him out your window. Get him out your window. Quick, quick, quick. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Literally, my car is just crumbs, brie, and garlic. So I think a highlight for all of us, uh, if I'm not mistaken, would be probably watching the Cactus video back for the first time. Um, it was. Uh, it was our second episode, was it? Yeah. Well, second, second proper, proper episode, episode yeah. yeah. Um, and compared to the first, which was pretty much just shot in a car park, uh, this one really took it to a whole new level, both in terms of production value and the 
cars that we were reviewing and just the lengths that we went to to make it a much more yeah. uh, just a, just a really good quality. Yeah, we episode. brought the drones in, didn't yeah. we? So we had drone footage in there that gave the aerial much, footage. It gave yeah. a much higher production level. Yeah, yeah. 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 The stats <laughs> accurate <laughs> on this game. No, uh, the, the, the timing's definitely not accurate because I should be ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, like you should be winning, right? Mate, you're taking that corner like my grandma. Here we go. About to win. The map. Champion. Well, no, you didn't even get a chance to Matt's finish that. It's just really rude. So unimportant, your drive, that they just cover it up. Well, well done, Matt. Thank you. I can't say I'm surprised. Well played. You are quite old, so you yeah. deserve to be better. I did. So I think our future aspirations for the show are, you know, we want to continue making like incredible shows. We want to keep making incredible episodes. Getting better We're and better. And raise better. the bar yeah. every single time. Um, and I know our dad, who you know was very much a pivotal point in in like bringing us together in, into motor cars from a young age. He's super proud of everything yeah. that we've done, and he keeps he, he, even today like he's giving us like great ideas and yeah. you know he keeps saying how proud he is of us and like you know the, I think he feels like that because he knows he's actually the one. I think he just wants to get in on the show. I was gonna he say, wants yeah. to be the fourth yeah. presenter. He does. Oh, dad. Yeah. He's way too old. Old time Rog. Like Tash. Yeah. We have a few regrets, um, such as we wish we'd done more planning, careful planning, but we've learned by that. Yeah. Um, more, more, more equipment would have always been great, that's one of our other biggest regrets. Um, but you know, on a positive note, we've got season two, which we're really excited about, which is in the pipeline, and we um, should be filming fairly soon. Yeah, lots of awesome um, stuff. Just, just getting bigger and better, really. I think that's, that's, that's our biggest thing. I only wish that we'd actually started it sooner, you know, we could, Ooh, be, yeah, we could be further along. Yeah, and, we could uh, be, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, I think I think we're we're pretty proud of everything that we've done, mm. um, and despite having all the challenges uh, you know put up against us, uh, I think we can look back on that and we've learnt from it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the only way is up, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Who's that? Who? What? It's George. Oh. You're already through. You wanted a four by four. Yeah. We have <laughs> All right. Thanks a f lot. That was the most embarrassing thing I've ever done in the whole of my life. Matt. Hold that. Absolutely no doubt the 205 GTI drove considerably better than the uh, 208 GTI. Did you actually drive the 208 GTI yet? No. Hang on a second. That shouldn't be in French. How am I supposed Who's put it in French?